jeepers! You're listening to Smash or Pass! Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the JV hey. and Millie channel. Today we are going to be reviewing A Frightened Hound Meets Demons Underground. Honestly, after watching the episode, I like this title. You know what strikes me as somewhat unusual, but I'm obviously not complaining about it? I'm about to think it's not unusual. It's I'm not sorry. unusual to me, demon. No, that's, that's cringe. But the fact that you consider... I don't even know when this was. I'm assuming mid to late 70s. Mm. But we had an animated Scooby-Doo you know, episode that was able to use demon in the title... And yet, for the live action movie in 2002, it had to be centered to like daemons and creatures. So, I just thought it was interesting that culturally that they were allowed to get away with this. Yeah, no, that is interesting. Okay, so JB, plot summary. Okay, so Scooby and the gang are kind of tossed in the middle of a pre existing adventure that was kind of kick started when some construction workers uncovered a vault from. Uh, many years ago, shall we say, that leads to a group of demons. Now, the kind of mythos behind this is that a brave soldier or a brave wizard and his compadres ended up banding together many moons ago to to defeat these demons. And so now they're back for revenge, and it seems that Scooby and the gang are the only ones that can, that can save the day. So will they be able to do it, or is the whole thing a hoax? We'll find out now. Indeed we will. So we start off pretty much instantly seeing those red demons. So what do you think? Honestly, this is the first time that I've got such nostalgia for the design of the demon. Because I think I remember watching the episode with a friend that I had ages and ages ago. I just remember, I remember seeing them. I don't know if they ever made like toys with them. But it's one of the monster designs that stayed with me the most, except I've not thought about it since, you know what I mean? It's, it's an odd thing to say, it's like, it's always been at the back of my mind, like, but, I don't know, it's, a, it's like a subliminal thing. But it's one of my favourite demons, and again, instantly when I, get, when I think about going to do more top 10 monsters of this, top 10 monsters of that, I think this one might actually come up for me more often than not. Um, they're a bit kooky, because I think they've made them a bit... A bit chunky, a bit like me, and so they remind me to that end of the gargoyles from Hercules. But I don't think it takes away from it, especially with the noises that they make. What do you think about the demons? I think they look really scary. I think they make a really good intimidating villain. You know what they remind me of? What? It's like they've taken the base design from the snow ghost and recoloured it and like added wings. Hmm. I guess I didn't see it. It's just like, I don't know, that kind of almost... Mm big Grinch type thing. I don't know, like like an elf almost. It's weird. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay, so... um, I guess it also starts with a flashback that shows a talisman that keeps them away. This is something that's very me because it's, again, it's like a Stephen King plot. Like, demons that were once, you know, vanquished and it's a talisman. I mean, it's a bit supernatural if it was real. But I like that for one, it isn't, you know, here's a haunted house, they're a haunted person. Obviously that's not what all Scooby is. I mean, we've seen great episodes in this series, like Gator Ghoul and stuff like that, where it has been different. But they've actually taken time to construct actual mythology and lore around why these demons exist and what's, you know, worked in the past. So it seems that they've tried to do a bit more of an intelligent story this time. Except we've kind of got the privilege of not limiting that to the new Scooby-Doo movies, which was you know double the length of this. I think they've done a good job, at least with the setup. I'm not going to give away my verdict. No, they've certainly set it up well. And someone goes missing, which leads to the gang having to explore the underground city. I love the concept of an underground city. I think if you think about the school in The Mystery Begins been underground... That was really fun. And also, like, the Ghost Whisperer, where they have an underground city as well. Yeah. I've enjoyed Ooh. this concept done many times. The only thing is, is don't we see the sky in this underground city? I, I don't... <laughs> it, it, it's weird. See, I almost feel like, from an animation point of view, they could have actually been trying to make this their first real trip into the paranormal, and maybe someone last minute said, hang on a minute, we need to, like work some things out 
because I noticed some inconsistencies. It's not the first episode that's done this, but I've noticed that Daphne switches between Jeepers and Creepers a lot. So I don't know if at some point Heather North maybe made a mistake and they didn't have the budget or the editing software to you know edit it every single time she did it. But it kind of took me out a few times because I always remembered Jeepers. Jeepers is Daphne's thing. And so to hear Creepers so many times is so weird. It's like playing Minecraft. So that's something that I want to open up to everyone. If any Scooby experts listening knows why sometimes it's Jeepers, sometimes it's Creepers, please do let me know because it, it's kind of off-putter. Interesting. Okay. So, um, Daphne's kidnapped in this one. Boo. And I feel like this is one of the episodes where I got a bit wound up with Velma. Doesn't she say danger for and Daphne again? Is it? I know there's like a scene. I don't know if it was this or if it was the magic episode. But it was just Daphne was trying to rig something up and she like got her nail caught in one of the keys. I think it, I might I might be getting but definitely Velma's not fantastic in this episode. I think Velma's not really had a great episode this whole season actually she's just not been annoying her best moment was definitely in the no face episode oh when she's like hey, hey, yeah, when she just hey. sasses like girl yeah no that was quite funny for Velma it's kind of rare to see Velma being funny okay so Shaggy and Scooby find Daphne in the music shop they all then find Daphne and Velma at the med store where the demon is so that's because you kind of start to see there how they make the red smoke for the demon which is nice because I wasn't expecting, like, el- like elaborate plots. It's just, all you need for Scooby stuff is something somewhat plausible. Like, I think it's a level up from what they would have done if it was an ice-based villain. Like, it's a smoke machine or it's a massive tub of dry ice that no one noticed. Like, the fact that it's a chemical reaction, you can kind of buy a bit more, I want to say. Because if, you know, if you're being chased, but there's massive boxes of dry ice, I think you're going to notice. Whereas this is a bit more, like, compact. Yeah. So I, I I liked it a lot. I don't know. It's so weird. I feel like I've reached a level of complacency where these episodes are just good. I feel like I know that I'm going to watch something good. And so I'm not overthinking it, to be honest. I'm more enjoying it. Like, this was a really good episode for me. No, it was a really good episode. The only issue I have here is I do think it gets a bit rinse and repeat. So they go back out of the city, someone else goes missing, they go back into the city, and then we find out it's the first guy that went missing. For me, there's a little bit of rinse and repeat in this episode, just a little bit. And not only that, but I think it makes... See, there's two errors that Scooby makes. It either only introduces one character so you know it's that character... Or it introduces too many characters that you don't know who any of them are. And so to that end for this one, I've put it's the first guy that went missing. Because I don't know who any of them are. Well, I think this episode is a good example of how to do it right. I just don't think they set it up. Like, I think they treated it from a writing perspective like it was a normal episode like we're just gonna make it the first person but from an animation perspective they made it more elaborate whereas i think the next episode has the opposite problem almost where they write too many characters in but their setting is minimalistic oh do you know what maybe and this is me flying a flag for a change like a like a a equality flag and all this stuff but like Maybe the issue isn't too many characters, but they're all so similar. It's yeah, always uh, just some middle-aged white man. I got that. See, and it's kind of like do something different. Like, do you know what? Like, I, and I don't know why this is the episode that comes into my head, but it does. An excellent example of it of when you do it right is you know like the recipe for disaster episode. Oh yeah. You have the old man. You have his daughter. There's distinct differences between characters that make them all individual in their own right. Whereas this is middle-aged white man number one. Middle-aged white man number two. It doesn't freshen it up. I do think you can have it like a white guy, middle-aged white guy. I do think that it's not a problem 
necessarily. No, but offset think, it with a different character instead of doing that mm, three times. One thing that you could that they could have done, which they have the capacity to do, they just don't want to do it for some reason, is just give them distinct fashion centers. Like we see in this one, they're all dressed the same because I guess it's like a construction worker thing. So they're all dressed like construction workers. Fine, we get that. But then in the next episode, it's like a ranch. So everyone has the same cowboy top, the same cowboy hat. And it's like, okay, you've got the model sheets on hand for a check shirt or, you know, an, a, a big jacket or something. So, or a, even a cowboy hat, like, you've got the capacity to make characters more distinct than they are. But it's just, oh, here's a Western episode, so everyone's going to dress like a cowboy. And it, it blends all into one. I think if they just were a bit looser with the wardrobe choices, they mm. would actually, they'd be able to get away with just similar characters. No, they would. And as we said, we've discussed the unmasking here, so really, I guess we're going to verdict. So, JB, for you, what do you think of this episode, a smash or a pass? See, I've got nothing fantastic to say about it, apart from the fact that the monster design is on point. I've got nothing awful to say about it as well. I just think this is a great episode. It wouldn't be one I'd direct people to instantly, like if it's the first one like back, or if it's the first Scooby episode ever. But I would say it's one of the ones that I've enjoyed the most in this series. So I'm going to smash this. This is a really good episode, in my opinion. What about you, Millie? Would you smash or pass a frightened hound meets demons underground? Oh, I'd definitely smash it as well. I think it's a great villain concept. Like I said, I love the underground town idea. For me, it's just that kind of snag of the characters been really similar. Mm. But I feel like after some of the episodes that we've endured in the past before Endure. getting to this series, it has to be a smash. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. So, yeah, there's another good episode. I think definitely it's worth checking out. I can't wait to see what everyone thinks about this one in the comment section. And once again, please do help me out with this whole Jeepers Creepers scenario. Because I'll tell you what, it's upsetting me. And I'm sure it's upsetting a lot of people, a lot of the audience at home. So please do help me out. Um, this is Wednesday's episode, if I'm not mistaken, right? No, you are correct, JB. This episode is going out on Wednesday the 21st of December. Ooh, so we're getting close to Christmas again. I acknowledge that not everyone listening to this is is going to celebrate Christmas, but winter season, no doubt you're starting to hear some Christmas music, no doubt you're starting to see some Christmas lights, so best wishes for that. I hope that everyone has a great year, a great Christmas. Spend it with who you want to spend it with. Buy what you want to buy if you can get it. You know, don't buy what you want to buy. You know what I mean? It's just a great time of year. So please let us know in the comment section as well your Christmas wish. And most likely in the next batch of reviews, not the next one, but the next batch, we're going to start asking some different themed questions based upon the new year. So make sure to get thinking about some of your new year's goals. I know that we're definitely starting to think about that as well. So if you do want to hear more reviews, plus interviews and more content, then please like, comment and subscribe. JB and Millie.